But I'm so excited, uh, Peggy, that you'll be joining us um, at the K through 12 Mental Health Conference this year. Um, we'd love to just hear what is it that you'll be discussing at the conference? Why is it so important for those watching the conference and for students these days? Truth is, is that whether we're parents, whether we're clinicians, whether we're educators, our kids are being educated um, by the media, right? In all kinds of ways and in unprecedented ways. And where sex is concerned, if we don't just you know, swallow our discomfort and figure out how to have a healthy, productive, normalized discussion about sexuality with our kids, the media is gonna do it for us. Because if we're not talking about to our kids about sex, everybody else sure is. There was new research just a couple of years ago that looked at um, 17 to 24 year olds or 14 to 24 year olds. And they found that with the older group, with the college age kids, um, that they said that pornography was the number one source of trusted information on sex. It came above talking to their partners about sex. But the good news of that was for 14 to 17 year olds, they still said their parents. What that means is that we have a window. We can talk to young people, normalize conversations, have conversations about healthy relationships, not just about consent, but about the whole gamut of what mutuality and pleasure looks like. And that we must now in a way that we could kind of get away with not before. I guess I'd also ask, do you feel like there's there's one particular biggest issue, biggest problem, um, you know, in terms of kids and sexuality that you're seeing? What I found in the two separate sets of research that I did was that when we were talking about girls, it was very much about disconnection from body. When we were talking about boys, it was very much about disconnection from heart. There was a real sort of um, interesting I guess, tension between the ways that girls learn to completely ignore and not feel and suppress everything that was going on in their bodies, and that boys were learning to ignore and suppress everything that went on in their hearts, and the ways that that interacted to, um, to make what was really a, a pretty difficult and often unhealthy um, sexual and emotional relationship for young people. What do you feel like are the biggest takeaways that you hope that the audience gets out of your out of your presentation? I think that the biggest takeaway is that, you know, what I just wanted to do with my work was open conversation, was yeah. to have people, have adults and kids too, young people too, hear from, hear the voices of young people, hear what they're struggling with, hear what they're talking about, hear what they're believing that maybe mm, you go, geez, I wish they wouldn't, you know, that that's not a, a, a belief you want them to be holding um, so that we can start having just basic conversations with them. But whenever you engage, however you engage, whether you're somebody who, you know, wants to uh, be abstinent until marriage or whether you're somebody who hooks up every weekend, you know, that you are doing that in a way that is safe, that is ethical, and that is good for you. Thank you so much, Peggy. Um, and thank you for joining us um, at the at the conference. I'm really excited to be coming in. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, we cannot wait. We cannot wait. So thank you so, so much for joining us today and for joining us in January. We're really looking forward to it.